This is a basic introductory course to removing the terminals from the terminal housings in the Volkswagen wiring harness. I'll be up front. This is a promotional video to make you want to purchase a pair of the terminal release tools that I make, which is what we're looking at right now. They come in two different sizes. They come in the junior size and the micro size, the micro being thinner, narrower, and has less spacing between the ends of the tools. With these, you should be able to re remove about 85 to 9 percent of the terminals from the terminal housings in the Volkswagen platform. So, there they are. Now, a tool that people try to use on the Volkswagen wiring harness is one of these. Not sure who makes them. Um, the smallest terminal release tool on there is about the size of the junior in terms of the spacing between them and the width of them is approximately the same as well. However, the thickness of the tool there is much thicker and you can see they're completely straight. You also notice the length of them. Uh, my tool is longer and you will see where the shortness of that green tool that becomes a problem. So I make two different sizes, a junior and micro, and as the name would apply, they fit two, diff two different size terminals, the junior and the micro. This is the radial wiring harness from a new Beetle. Um, should note, you do not want to use a micro release tool on a junior terminal. You do not want to shove a junior release tool into a micro housing. Doing this will cause damage to something one way or the other. Secondary barriers are these plastic retainers used to help keep the wire in place. Now most of the time they're purple as seen here. And another one that is purple on this terminal housing. Uh, secondary barriers have some way of keeping them locked in place. It varies on them, but like for example this one there's a little barb there. One on each side of it locks it in place. Uh, a common D-type plug and if you look down inside there, that purple piece, that's the secondary barrier. The tip of my knife is touching. Now, the secondary barrier is not always purple. Again, with the Beetle radial wine harness, you can see that the yellow bits in the black and brown plug, that's the secondary barrier. You should also note not everything has a secondary barrier. The CD wine harness, no secondary barrier. And this single terminal housing has no secondary barrier but most terminal housings do. Okay, removing terminals. This is the fun part. Now in this example we are using a standard D-type housing with a junior size terminals inside of it. So the first thing you need to do is remove the secondary barrier. Actually if you slide it over to that position you can remove the terminals but in this video I will go ahead and remove it completely. And you can see the secondary barrier is a horseshoe shaped clip. So with that, I'm now able to try to release the terminals. So first, I want to try the green tool. Now you'll see the small set of release tools on there. It does fit inside nicely. It bottoms out. However, I'm not able to remove the wire. Let's try the other side. You, when I'm using this tool, I never feel it engage or click, per se. And you can see the wire just doesn't come out. So now I'm going to use the the junior size tool that I make. And if you watch carefully now, I'm going to get the tool in. And I slide it in, and there's a point which it clicks right there. And now I can remove the wire. Now that clicking feel, not they won't always do that. And also just because they and just because it does do the click as seen right there, I think it is or there. Um, the wire, like in this case I'm pulling, the wire's not coming out, so kind of wiggle a little bit, and the wire then pops free, no problem. So, this is another type of uh, terminal housing. This is found at the base of an A-pillar for like the door wiring harness or through the dry box to the engine bay. But you can see that it has a raised wall around it, so the green tool, it just is not able to fit. Also, um, there's two size terminals in there, a junior and a micro. That tool would not fit in the micro size. So first thing, for the, to get the terminals out of here, I need to slide the secondary barrier over. And you see there's a little space for it to slide into. Oftentimes, uh, secondary barriers, if you look closely, you'll see which way they'll be able to move. And sometimes they have arrows. So click, there it goes. 
sometimes they'll have, uh, different types of barriers will have arrows on them pointing you to which direction to move it. With the secondary barrier in the release position, I can now insert the tool. Again, using the junior tool for the junior size terminal. And insert, and I kind of feel it click a little bit and pull out. Now, I'll get some other tips here. Um, oftentimes, I find that it helps to help it helps to push the wire further into the terminal housing. What you're doing when you're inserting the tool is you're compressing these barbs so that they can fit through an opening. Those barbs, you know, are, their job is to keep the terminal in place. What will happen is those barbs will be butted up against the terminal housing and they kind of bite into it so that they cannot be compressed. So by pushing the terminal further in, you get the barbs so they're not touching the terminal housing so you can compress them easier. So and you, you can see I'm using the micro tool now. And there's one of them. And we got one last terminal. On this particular type of housing also, the access points, there are small holes ab just directly above and below the terminal. Now I'm trying to insert the tool while looking through my video camera, so I have no depth perception when I'm making this the videos for this. That's why I don't look so coordinated half the time. And there we go. Now if I were to put the terminals back in, I would need to lock the secondary barrier. In this case, it just clicks right over, and there we go. Um, again, with the New Beetle radio wiring harness, the secondary barrier, just able to use my pocket knife here, just pull it out a little bit, and from there I can just slide it right on out with my bare hands. Sometimes when you go to put those in, you have to kind of wiggle them. So I'm going to select which wire I'm going to take out. Let's see, go with the brown wire. That should be the uh, hood alarm contact switch, or which the radio and the hood alarm are kind of tied together, if you look at the wiring diagrams. So I insert the junior release tool, and it clicks, and let's see, it doesn't release, so give a little wiggle, and the wire comes right out. No problem. So that's basic operation. Now, not all terminals need any kind of special tool. Um, there's about 10 to 15 percent that I'm able to use a pocket knife on, for example. Uh, this terminal housing, I believe this is a airbag wiring harness because there's shunts on the bottom of it. So it makes me believe it's for the airbag. I'm not positive. Uh, you can see there's little openings in there that the barbs are poking through and they're spring loaded. So I can use the tip of my knife to push the barb down. And once I push the locking barb down, I can then slide the terminal out of the terminal housing. So for these, there's no special tool needed. Uh, most, pretty much all of the wiring harness really is taped up or wrapped one way or another, and sometimes you need to get into it. Now this tool is a stitch ripper. Uh, any fabric supply store or sewing supply store will sell these. Um, you can find them at your Walt, local Wally World as well. Uh, or if your mom does sewing, you can take one from her sewing kit. They cost just a couple of bucks. Um, just one thing to note, when you're going through the tape or the wrapping, make sure you don't unintentionally hook a wire and slice through it. Okay, even with the correct release tools, you will run into terminals that just won't release. No terminal release tool on the market guarantees you'll get the terminal out without damage. Removing terminals is part science and part art. Having the correct tools, like the ones I make, turns a task more of a science than art. Your skills will improve with practice. This is pretty much the video. If you'd like to get in touch with me, I'm at TDI Club mostly. I'm also hanging around VW Vortex. Just shoot me an instant message if you have any questions. Thank you.